Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Whiteout. As some of you know, in mid-January, I attended the Mid-Atlantic Leather Event, or MAL for short. And this is an event I highly recommend, and I get a great deal of enjoyment from. In fact, I've been going to this event since 2015, and 2020 was my sixth year in attendance. And of those six years, I've attended the Mid-Atlantic Leather Contest five times. Now, my experience with the contest has always been, uh, meh. Looking at Mid-Atlantic Leather and other similar leather contests such as International Mr. Leather, these contests have recently struggled to bring in engagement and participation from younger members in the community. Being a mid-twenties millennial myself, I was one of the youngest guys in attendance every year I viewed the Mid-Atlantic Leather Contest. But directly outside the contest, where the Kink Marketplace and other events were taking place, there was a great deal of diversity amongst all the age groups. So in this video, I aim to discuss why these leather events are not attracting younger demographics, and what could be done to help increase engagement before it's too late. So before we dive into the problems I have with the Mid-Atlantic Leather competition, I think it's best to show a timeline of what goes on during the three hour contest duration. So starting off, we have a grand opening with a flag ceremony and three separate national anthems, which takes about five minutes. The next 35 minutes is used for initial announcements and introductions, as well as introducing the Centaur Motorcycle Club and recognizing its members. The next 10 minutes is used to introduce all the judges, their backgrounds, as well as showing who the contestants are. After that, 10 minutes is given to a DC police officer who, in a sense, acts as like the opener for the show. So now, if you're keeping track of time, we are officially an hour into the contest and only 10 minutes has been used for actually introducing the contestants and doing anything I would consider really relevant to having a contest. But we still have two hours to go, let's see what happens. So the next 15 minutes are used for the jockstrap competition. This is where the contestants simply walk across the stage and show off a little eye candy. Well, eye candy if you're into daddies anyways. After the jockstrap event, we get a 25 minute intermission. And once the intermission is over, we are treated to a 15 minute long announcement of all the current title holders in attendance. So back to a quick time check, we're about an hour and 55 minutes into the contest. Let's just round it up to two hours to make this easy. So in that two hours, we have seen the contestants a total of 25 minutes. Are you starting to see where this contest may start coming off as uh, not very entertaining? But surely the last hour of the contest is gonna be a real screamer, right? Well, let's find out. So the next 25 minutes is the question and answer section of the contest. Each of the contestants is asked one question and they give an answer. Pretty straightforward, but I'm gonna come back to this later because the questions asked were pretty dumb. I shit you not, one of the questions asked was, how would you design a wedding cake? After that rather unusual question and answer section, 10 minutes is spent recognizing all the former Mid-Atlantic Leather contestants in attendance. And of course, plenty of time is spared to give them pictures on stage. Then the next 12 minutes is spent by the previous Mid-Atlantic Leather 2019 title holder as he gives a speech. This guy was fantastic. He had a very meaningful and heartfelt speech. Great job with him. And after that, three minutes is spent announcing all the sponsors and, of course, all the free swag the winner is going to receive, before the final ten minutes is spent on reintroducing all the contestants and announcing who the winner was. And that's it. That's everything that happened during the Mid-Atlantic Leather 2020 competition. So for those of you keeping score at home, out of the three hours of contest time, the contestants were only on stage for a total of one hour. Now to be fair, I'll also include some of the crowd pleaser activities such as the police officer opener and the previous 2019 title holder speech. And of course, let's toss in the intermission to get more alcohol because God knows you kinksters like to drink. So including what I deem to be crowd pleasing activities, this adds another 50 minutes to the contest. So that last hour and 10 minutes, yeah, that part needs an update because it's very clear this contest format and traditions have stayed unchanged for probably the past 30 years. And it's time for an update. 
So I'm going to be making some comparisons from this contest to another event which is very true to my heart and that's Mr. International Rubber or MIR. Now, while leather events like Mid-Atlantic Leather or even International Mr. Leather are failing to attract new members, Mr. International Rubber, on the other hand, has seen a significant growth in attendees over the past five years. And the reasons why this is happening should be very apparent to anyone who's not in the leather community's cult of personality. So let's dive into why leather events are failing to attract a significant amount of new members. So as we begin looking at this event, I want you to keep in mind, the main purpose of these events should be to entertain. Time is always a valuable resource at these conventions. I could spend my time at hotel room parties, or browsing the vendor market, or meeting new friends. So if a contest is going to use three hours of my time, the least it could do is provide an entertaining experience. So starting right off the bat, we have the flag ceremony with the national anthems. Now, nothing wrong with having pride in your country and starting an event off this way, but this was done in the most boring way possible. Instead of providing an entertaining option, like giving someone the mic and having them sing out the national anthem, Instead, we got a pre-recorded orchestra track played off in its entirety from a CD. And this was done three times for the Dutch, Canadian, and United States national anthems. So everyone is just standing around listening to this for five minutes. And that's it. That was the opener for Mid-Atlantic Leather. Now let's compare this to how the Mr. International Rubber Contest opened. So comparing the two, which event would you say had a more entertaining opener? So moving on to the 35 minutes of announcements and legacy traditional displays. Sadly, I don't have much footage of this because it wasn't until the end of when all this was taking place when I started actually taking notes and video. In fact, it was because this part of the contest was moving at such a snail's pace that I was inspired to make this video. Because taking notes and video for YouTube was actually more fun than watching the contest. Anyways, so during this time, all the previous Mid-Atlantic Leather and Centaur Motorcycle Club members are provided recognition. This basically means all these old guys come line up on stage and just stand around for a while while some of the guys light candles on a menorah looking stand. And this is a way to recognize now deceased members and previous members of the Centaur Motorcycle Club. And I understand it's a nice gesture, but it was extremely tedious and slow. Some of the guys in the Centaur Motorcycle Club are easily pushing 80 years old, and it no joke took 5 minutes for them to line up on stage. Again, I understand the tradition and the history behind why the ceremony takes place, but it's far from what I would describe as entertaining. My advice, the MC should just have an announcement like, will all members of the Centaur Motorcycle Club please stand? And then they do so, and everyone claps, and it's done in a minute. Maybe announce a few of the names for people who donated a large amount of money, but that whole process needs to be shortened to like five minutes at the most. So next, we're moving on to the introduction of the judges and contestants. Now this is where it starts to become a bit of a snake eating its own tail type scenario. Because the contest is failing to attract younger attendees, it's also going to be lacking in younger contestants. If I had to make my guess, I'd estimate the youngest contestant to be about 35, with the majority being around age 50 and the oldest being early 60s. So, if you're into daddies, well then leather contests are gonna do it for you. But me personally, I wasn't seeing much eye candy. Although, this is very highly subjective and it does come down to personal preference. So after that, we get a talk from a DC Metropolitan Police Officer. I'm actually kind of a fan of this dude. He's arguably one of the more entertaining parts of the contest, and he did a good job of being an opener for the main event. He's done a similar routine every Mid-Atlantic Leather contest that I've been in attendance for, and he's one of the traditions I wouldn't change, actually. So after that, we got the jockstrap competition. This is pretty self-explanatory, and it's the first time we get some actual contest competing happening. You know what would have been really great though? If all this earlier fluff was cut and we didn't have to sit around for an hour before I got to see a little skin. 
So then we have an intermission, and so after that 25 minutes of intermission, we get this gem. The announcing of title holders. Now again, this is something that could have been condensed to like 30 seconds, where we simply ask all current title holders to stand, and the audience gives them a round of applause. But no, each current title holder gets an individual announcement and a walk across the stage. All 49 of them. Mind you, these are just the current title holders from 2019 and 2020. Who knows how many other previous title holders are in attendance. It's exactly this reason why most people consider the contest to be in their own separate bubble from the rest of the kink community. It just comes off as one big circle jerk, and nothing about this is entertaining towards the casual viewer. In contrast, do you know what Mr. International Rubber does? They devote this time towards actually entertaining the viewer, with events like the fetish crab bag where contestants have to create a kink scene out of a random array of objects. Now I'll leave this up to you, but just comparing the two, which one looks more fun to you? So now we move on to the question and answer section, and man, this section got pretty dumb. Here's a sample of some of the questions contestants were asked. You are the star in a B-rated horror film about cheerleaders. What is the plot of this film? Pick three judges and name a type of plant that matches their personalities. As a massage therapist, which judge would you stroke and feed without touching? Yeah, I had to do a double take on that question. I had no clue what they were talking about. Stroke and feed without touching? If you get enjoyment out of seeing some cringy behavior, then this section would have been right up your alley. Also, every contestant had the exact same suck-up opener of thanking the judges and everyone else for their time. If I were to change the section personally, I would have picked better questions. And even better yet, why not make a Twitter poll or something and have the audience vote on what questions to ask? There you go, that, that makes it super easy. After that, 10 minutes was spent recognizing the former Mid-Atlantic Leather title holders. Again, understandable as a tradition, but not very entertaining for anyone as a newcomer. Then we had a speech from prior Mid-Atlantic Leather 2019 title holder, Emerson Ancitio, Ancitio, I don't know how to pronounce that. Even though it's clear English isn't this guy's native tongue, he really gave a heartfelt speech about brotherhood and what this community means to him. By the end, I'm sure there wasn't a dry eye in attendance. Really gotta give him credit where it's due. This guy earned it and he gave a fantastic speech. Wouldn't have changed anything about his section. And then finally, after all this, we have the announcement of the winner. And it was actually one of the guys I picked at the start of the event, so I, I was happy with the choice. Now, before you go making judgments based on my criticisms, there are good reasons why the traditions in these leather events have persisted for so long. See, events like Mid-Atlantic Leather and International Mr. Leather are products of a bygone era. A time where gays were seen as a serious nemesis to society, and where being outed as gay could cost you your most precious relationships with family, friends, and your local community. And this is why the brotherhood and sense of tradition has remained so strong in these contests. These groups formed over a common interest and had each other's backs when society was against them. So it makes sense why so much time in the contest was devoted to past traditions and recognizing members who helped bring the scene to where it is today. But we have to think about how we streamline all the legacy stuff to keep the contest fresh for new attendees. All this tradition may be fascinating in a cosmic sense, but it's painfully slow for any newcomers looking to be entertained. And tradition isn't just getting in the way of event content. Every leather contest has the exact same dress. Either it's a leather jock or leather formals. Sometimes people will change it up with a leather kilt, but it all looks pretty much the same. Meanwhile, here are some of the shots from contestants from the various Mr. International Rubber events. Do you see the variety and uniqueness in designs and outfit types? Hell, I don't think I've even seen a contestant wear a full leather motorcycle suit when participating in a contest, and God forbid they deviate beyond the standard colors and wear something like the high-vis neon leather colors offered by companies like Rider Gear. It's always the same leather formals and the same leather vest and the same leather jock, all in the same colors. 
At the end of the day, the ultimate goal of these events is to be entertaining. But when half of your event is mostly boring fluff, it's hard for anyone not already established in that culture to give a damn or find any enjoyment in what's going on. And because these leather events have failed to provide any real entertainment value for new participants, I predict we're only going to continue seeing massive declines in attendee numbers. So I'm going to leave it here everyone. These have been my thoughts on why I feel that the major leather events like International Mr. Leather or Mid-Atlantic Leather really aren't that attractive or exciting to millennials like myself as opposed to other events like MIR which have been doing a much better job of attracting new millennials and newcomers to the cake scene. Uh, those, those leather communities, they're just so sought in tradition and again nothing wrong with that. I can respect all the tradition and all the sense of brotherhood that they instill in these contests. It's just not a very entertaining experience. So hopefully we can have a bit of a discussion about this. I would love to hear your thoughts. Maybe I was a bit too harsh on some of my points. Maybe you have some other points you'd like to bring to the table. I'd love to hear what you have. But everyone, that's it for today. I'll see y'all in the next video.